Hey everyone, this is Phil here from Northern Wild Harvest. If you're new to our channel, we do large-scale adventure foraging in the Canadian wilderness. Right now we are in the middle of the Yukon Territory and it's a windy day and we're going to be going to harvest wild morel mushrooms from a wildfire. We've scouted this fire a few episodes ago. We know that there's mushrooms. They've had some time to grow now and they should be large enough that a good percentage will be ready to pick. Now, if you don't know how morel mushrooms work, they are the fruiting body of the mycelium the organism is actually under the ground, the mushroom is just the fruit, and a mushroom's main purpose is to spread spore to new areas. So as we're harvesting, we try to harvest mushrooms that are large enough that they're creating spore, and when we hike them out, they're able to spread that spore to areas that don't already have mycelium. We have to hike in through a muskeg bog, down an old fireman's trail from when they fought the forest fire, up the side of the mountain, and then we can start picking some morels. So let's get into another foraging adventure. It's my eyeball. Is it a black eye from yesterday? I got a black eye. <laughs> what are you going to do all day? Keep the fires going, dry some mushrooms. They're all dried already. Hello. Morning. Into the iconic Klondike Highway. The only road in this wilderness. Okay, so we have arrived. The burn is way up the hills behind me here. The only way in there is through a muskeg swamp. And if you don't know what muskeg is, it's basically like a northern boreal forest bog land that is covered with a thick layer of sphagnum peat moss and a conglomerate of different plants. And it creates this big, thick, insulated layer. Sometimes it's really wet, sometimes it's not as wet, sometimes there's permafrost underneath, but it's usually quite squishy to walk on, almost like walking on snow. When you're carrying a pack board, that can be quite exhausting. Luckily, there is a fireman's trail that we can follow, so the, all the trees have been removed. It's very wet, but it's a straight shot into the burn, and it's not that far. So, shouldn't be too difficult to get in there today. You stoked? Yeah. So I'm setting my compass here. 315 again. GPS is live, we are tracking. Into the end. As you can see on the very far hillside the burn. That's our goal. We're almost to the burn. And let's see how the mushrooms have grown. I think it's been four days, maybe five days of letting them grow. Let's just hope that nobody else has come in here and taken the babies. I see one there. It's been pretty cold out, so yeah, they're not growing very fast. They have not grown very quickly with this cold weather. There'll be spots up on the hill where there's more sun. They'll probably be pretty big. There, we, now we've documented how the cold weather can affect the speed of growing for the morels. If it had been hot out, these probably would be three times the size right now or more. But there are some that are pickable, so we'll still get a good harvest in today. I see quite a few through here. See as we come up the hill here, they are a little bit bigger.
That's a good sign. That might be the biggest one so far. Starting to look better for us here. Look at the size of that one. And another big one right here. This one needs a bit of cleaning. Right as we hit this hillside, they're much bigger. Woo. Only a few of these are really big enough to, to pick. Maybe, you know, maybe one of those. So the rest of those will be left. There's still four there. Oh, there's a nice big one. I'd like to see that. Beauty, eh? So, three there. Another nice little cluster we can thin through. So there's the packs, and we just cleaned up this little area here. And now we're gonna go see what fills up to over here. Quite a few here. Where else? So this is something you gotta watch out for. See that white mold? We're not gonna take that. We're actually gonna get that away from the, the mushrooms. So it can spread. Here is a perfect example of why we cut morels instead of pulling them. I pulled this one because I was feeling lazy and there was two more little baby pins attached to the same stem. So there's where I cut. I cut that after I pulled it out. But if I had cut that from the beginning, these two would have had a chance to grow. That is why we cut and we don't pull. Now some species of morel have a longer stem and you can kind of just pinch them off, but pulling the entire stem base out of the ground is not something I'd recommend if you like getting lots of morels or you plan to come back. Oh, this is a good little spot. This is very exciting. Look at that. They're much fresher. Just getting into a better zone here now. So a lot of these, oh, they go up the hill. A lot of these are ready to pick. Just clean them off. And see that one's got the white mold. So we're gonna remove that so it doesn't spread. And we can pick these. Yeah, this hill's looking good. Look at that, I spotted it from over there. Pretty thick and heavy, they're hardy. Maybe double wall, yeah, they are double wall.
This hill is flushing really nicely. Phil's over there and he's just loading. These are a little too small to pick, but this is a really nice spot. Or big enough to pick. Like that one. big ones here something up the hill has caught my eye and has made me quite excited let's go take a look and there are small morels through here but just look at how many are coming A lot of morales and they just keep going all the way up as far as i can see oh man come back in another four days and we'll get a lot more Mound of dirt. It's covered in fire cups and morale. That is a lot of morels. They just need to grow. Look at them all. It is unbelievable here. I don't even want to touch them. I just want to let them do their thing for a while. Get bigger. Going. Oh, look at those. That's a nice little chunk. Up there. Up there. Up there. Get that white mold out of there. These are the early stage fire morels. It's a number of species mixed, and they're very similar to the early black elata morels. Almost identical to the naturally growing elata black morels in this area. As morel pickers, we usually aim to get a basket an hour or a bucket an hour. That's considered quite good. Last year, we were getting into some patches where we were getting a bucket in 20 minutes. That was exceptional. Um, but right now, it's about two thirds of a bucket in an hour and a half. So it's uh, early in the season, but it should pick up as the mushrooms grow. We did see quite a few babies there. So we're gonna head up the hill with our pack boards now and check the, the next elevation band up in there and see how that's doing. All right, let's pick some more morels. I want to show you here this is pretty common on burns these mushrooms they've dried out here before they ever really started releasing a large amount of spore so that mushroom will not grow anymore that's done that's very common i'm gonna leave that there all of these just too exposed here in these black open areas and so 
I never had a chance to get to that stage, unfortunately. Ground is starting to open up again. I think this will be a bit better for us. Oh, there's a few. Oh, yes. Over there. A whole bunch. We'll get these first. Right over there. Woo! Nice, they're all good size. Look at them all. They go right up the hill now. They're a little small up there, but oh my gosh, this is like a big waterfall of morels right down the whole hillside here. Struggling to pick this on the side of the hill while keeping my bucket from falling over. All the way up the hill. Well, I just picked uh, half a bucket in like 20 minutes, so I'm going to sit down and stretch for a minute. Put a bunch more right here to pick. Oh, Phil's somewhere over here. And Alec is somewhere way over here. Way, way, way over there. Probably gonna try to meet up with Phil here. He's uh, somewhere up the hill above me here. Just see him through the trees over here. Hey, fancy seeing you here. this stage in the flush it's probably a good idea to take the big ones instead of leaving them because if we're not gonna come back here for four days and it's gonna be nice out those big ones might be going bad and spreading mold and other issues to all the ones that are little right now so by taking a few just grazing through it it will help ensure that all these little ones don't have rot issues when we come back next there's a nice little line of larger, decent sized ones. But most of them aren't ready. How many morels are growing down in this hole? We will never know. I can see four right there at least. Yeah, there's got to be about a million down in there, but we can't get them. So as I'm walking through this stuff, these burnt spruce trees act like big whips when they get stuck on your body. And so they whip you. That's how Randy got almost got hit in the eye yesterday was on one of these. That is why having a strong bucket like we're using is important. Because if we were carrying it in like a plastic bag or a mesh bag, they'd be whipping into our mushrooms and we'd come out with crumbs. It just doesn't work in this type of environment, sadly. So you need something stronger. Okay, so this is about maybe a 
square foot and a half. I'm just gonna count these. And there's a whole bunch around this, but just right here. One, two, three, four. 35, right there. And then more. And then more. And it keeps going, clusters like that. And I just got these over here. So only a few of these will be picked. But that's quite a nice cluster, you gotta admit. Yoink. Cold weather this season has slowed down the mushroom growth here in the Yukon. This is often what happens when the mushrooms start flushing and then are hit by below freezing temperatures. They will likely mature and release their spore while they're still small. Luckily there are thousands of mushrooms growing in this patch to make up for their size, and to add to that we are harvesting them from the beautiful, pristine Yukon wilderness. For anyone viewing this series for the first time, there is only one local residence for over 100 kilometers in either direction following the road. Although the weather hasn't been ideal for us, we know that the Yukon has the potential to produce incredible years with remarkable quality late stage fire morels. It's always a high risk, high reward kind of situation when harvesting morels in North America's boreal frontier. So we have stashed our five and a half baskets we have so far in total and now we're going to take our pack boards and move further up the hill and keep picking for a while. Had a nice little lunch break there. Let's get back into it. I'm covered in ants. There's like three on me just now. Is that a couple? <laughs> and higher we must climb. Have to come back for those big honkers right there. It's like a bunch of weird little bony fingers trying to grab at you, trying to grab you. Nice here. Chunky Morcellus. Beauties. It's a bit of a walk, but you can't complain about those views. Wow. You can see for so far at once. Some good sized ones. Oh, what a relief. That was pretty good. We just did like close to half a bucket in, in maybe a little over half an hour. 
So that's the best picking we've done today so far. They were still medium small, but they were mature mushrooms up here with the conditions in the exposed hills. They just matured small. You can see the roadway over there in the distance. That's where we have to hike out to with these packs when we're done. What's quite amazing, there isn't a private property for as far as you can see in any direction. This is just entirely wilderness apart from the road and the gravel pits. Okay, it's getting later in the day here, so we've got another ba bucket there, a little more than a bucket here. He's just put another full basket on his pack and then a little bit in there. So we're going to head out and get another three buckets or so and then see where we're at after that. Pretty good to be picking. Feels great. Morales. Woo! There's a lot of little mushrooms right there. Morales, 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 morales. Not too heavy of a load. Only uh, four baskets of mushrooms. You know, last year we were getting days with eight in one trip. But early in the season, that's where my legs aren't ready for it yet. And there's a big hill in the swamp. Flinging back at me, that's why we give following distance because of those.
to do. Actually, let me pull it open. All right, we're gonna head back to camp now and go weigh up our mushrooms, have some dinner, and then put them in the dryer. There is dinner. So in total, we did nine hours, 36 minutes so far of actual hiking and picking at 11.53 kilometers. Our, our picking trail today is the purple, the pink purple line there. Lots of topography lines. We're home in the wilderness. Kilometer 518 on the Klondike Highway. Dinner's ready, and coffee's almost ready. Woohoo! Most of it wasn't ready, it hasn't grown very fast, but I'd say we got 11 and a half baskets total. Whoa, whoa. Maybe, maybe 12? Yeah. Nice. We only took yeah. about maybe 30% of what's there. Those burnt trees got me a little dirty today. On the top of my hand. You know, it just happens fast. You get clean. Woo! Clean. Clean as I'll get them. The rest is just stained in there. When I touch my clothes, dirty again. So we're gonna sit down and eat dinner, and then we'll weigh up our mushrooms have and have some coffee. Then we'll weigh up our mushrooms and uh, put them in the dryer. I'm excited to know what's inside. Oh, that looks super good. Fireweed in there? Yep. Nice. Garlic. And then what's Tomato. in here? It's uh, pork. I did it. I barbecued it and smoked it all day, slowly, and then I put it in there with pine needles. Nice, spruce, spruce, spruce tips and garlic? Yeah. Hell yeah. Teamwork! two-thirds but they're smaller mushrooms so they should be a pretty good weight per basket now they are a little bit dry so this is really all about our dry ratio so we'll show that in the next episode so check that out next week now we're gonna weigh them up see what we got fresh okay so we've put our basket on and then you tear that amount so it zeroes it 12.31 I just added those because it's awesome. right on. Good first day. But nice. again, it's all about the dry ratio on these. I think it'll get a really good dry ratio. Anything better than 10 to 1, so you want a lower number. So if we get like 8 to 1 or 7 to 1, we'd be really excited because we'd basically get 30% bonus for these mushrooms. There's no exactly what I was thinking. To do. to dryer number two. How many baskets left? Two more. So, we still had some room in the dryers here. The, the max for inside these two units is 100 pounds each, so 200 pounds. And then pretty soon here, we're going to be building some blow racks. Racks out here. Well, we've already got the racks, but we need to build the structure to sit them on. So all these extra racks can go out here. And then we can take advantage of the, the blowing air as well as the pulling air.
And we can run both these units off that little generator, which is very fuel efficient, and that helps a lot. A lot less carbon emission. All the exhaust gets blown out the unit because it's blowing air, and it saves us quite a bit of money. Firing up! Yeah, baby! Both fans are running. Smells like mushrooms. Smells like morels. If you haven't already seen this on our channel, we have this wood stove in here. It's cranked up, and then all the air gets pulled through these ducting units. It's all dry air. Not too hot when it goes through the dryer. Once they're at a certain dry percentage, they come in here to finish the final heat flashing, and you'll know they're done. It will sound like that. So this is mushrooms from a couple days ago. They've been done for a while. We just left them in here. Dried weight, much more valuable. 0 0.75, 0 0.72, 0 0.58, minus two. Awesome day. We'll do it again tomorrow, eh, Alec? Sounds good. Awesome, loved it. We're going to bed, we're winding down. See you tomorrow. Well, that was a pretty good day. We've been going nonstop for about 13 and a half hours. The season is just getting started. So the Yukon here where we're picking, this area is really known for its late stage fire morels, blondes and grays, Morcella tomentosa, and the greens, Morcella exuberans. Some of the best late stage fire morels come out of these northern boreal forests. Let's just hope that the, when the new ones come in later in the season, they're a good crop. But that was a great start, first proper day of picking. There's very many fires this year. Uh, so that's why we've done so much scouting on all these different burns, but we've got a, our eye in a number of spots and we should be able to keep it rolling for a little while with a little bit of luck and a little bit of uh, good weather. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider liking and subscribing. If you're a returning viewer, then again, thank you for being here. It really does uh, help keep the cameras rolling and we'll see you guys next time.